guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. In this video, we're going to be looking at physical geography um, in specific and erosion process, right? erosion by water, right? water being our main factor over here. So we're going to be looking at what erosion by water is. And in the next part, we'll look at what erosion by wind is. Right? So this is a very specific part of your syllabus that you need to know. It will mainly pertain more to your physical jog um, when you're looking at cars and aeolian landscapes you're looking at uh, those kind of erosional processes so there are two ways in which uh, water erosion or erosion by water takes place you have got erosion by unconcentrated flows and you have got erosion by concentrated flows give me a second all right so there are two different types you're going to be looking at, so you have to take note of what the different types of erosional processes, where they belong to. So erosion by unconcentrated flows. The first one we have is this thing called rain splash. So as the name suggests, rain splash right, is like rain that is splashing. So raindrops that are striking rocks and steel surfaces, they actually result in an impact whereby it is compressed and it will spread sideways. So this spreading causes instantaneous stress on the rock or soil that detaches particles from the surface. So this is where erosion takes place. It's when the rain hits the surface and it causes the particles on that surface to detach. So some particles may be entrained by water from the raindrop that will lead to this thing called entrainment. Okay, it's the picking up all right, whereby it's later transported by overland flows. So all rain splash does is to actually kind of like hit the ground. It helps to force or detach certain sediments off the ground and then from there they are actually picked up by for example overland flow or possibly even wind as well okay for transportation later on rain splash being the first erosion by unconcentrated flows okay, as the name suggests unconcentrated means that the water is not concentrated okay it can come very very irregularly okay that's not it's not all fixed in one dense like blob of water so rain splash releases particles for entrainment, uh, which is transported by overland flows. So repeated cycles okay, will actually cause the continual erosion of rocks and particles. So this picture here kind of like shows what rain splash is about, all about. It's when a rain droplet okay, actually falls on the ground, it splashes and it causes particles to detach. Simple. Alright, sheet wash. Okay, sheet wash is uh, another unconcentrated flow. We're going to be looking at overland flow in this area. Okay, sheet wash is basically the entrainment of loose, so the picking up of loose particles by runoff water. All right, so it's also known as overland flow. We'll see why sheet flow is when the shallow overland flow, uh, when loose particles are displaced, can results in the removal of any related particles, soil particles. So the overland flow, which is actually part of sheet wash, has two main types. Okay, we call them the Hawthornian overland flow and the saturated overland flow. So Hawthornian overland flow occurs when the precipitation exceeds the infiltration rate, where this causes water to not be able to infiltrate the ground anymore. Right, so it leaves the water on the surface, leading to this thing called a Hawthornian overland flow. On the other hand, saturated overland flow is when the groundwater table, okay, the water table is sitting right very, very close to the surface. So the, the ground is essentially very, very highly saturated, possibly due to the previous episode of rainfall or possibly due to um, other reasons. Okay, I've actually gone through this before. You can check out my previous videos. So saturated overland flow, right, it occurs when the ground is saturated. Hot and overland flows occurs when precipitation rate exceeds the infiltration rate. So essentially, sheet wash and sheet flow are erosional in nature, right? And are brought about by overland flow. So they kind of like fall as a subset, right? You can use them interchangeably, but when you're looking at specific overland flows, you're going to be looking at Hawthornian and saturated overland flows, right? But in the general scheme of things, these can also be called sheet wash. So overland flow is the mechanism that is responsible for the erosional processes of sheet wash and flow. So think of overland flow as the, like a river, okay, as overland flow. Within this river, there is sheet wash and sheet flow. There is the erosional processes that are going on inside. So this is what sheet wash and flow is, okay, they are the erosional processes. Overland flow is like, a, like the enabling factor, okay, it's a mechanism that is responsible for these um, sheet wash and sheet flows to be brought about. 
So the next part, we're going to be looking at concentrated flows. So the first one we're going to be looking at is real flow or real wash. So this is where your rails and gullies, you've heard of them before, comes in. So these are hill slope processes that occur when rainwater is heavy enough to actually carve out small channels on the hill slope. So it's very, very tiny little channels. Okay, they look something like this. Okay, think of it as a down the slope. Okay, this is a slope. So what happens is that it is able to do erosion as sediments on the hill slope right, are actually detached and removed by the action of water. So they erode deeper and they occur at a faster speed than your sheet flow or sheet wash. Uh, Mr. T over here. All right, and this would actually be what forms rills. Okay, so rills and gullies, they are essentially small little river channels that are basically formed okay, when your uh, rain water actually hits the hill slopes and it carves out these small little channels, um, of course, with the help of rain splash as well that we have learned before. So rills are essentially small, shallow hillside channels that form along a little slope. The next one will be channel flows. Okay, so this is where channel flow is a concentrated flow because we're looking specifically at the entire channel. So within channel flow, we're going to be looking at abrasion, hydraulic action, attrition, and solution as the few different erosional processes. I've already gone through this before in fluvial processes. I will leave a link in the top right corner of the screen as well as in the description. You can check it out. I think I've gone through that in enough detail. Maybe I can do it again next time as well. But essentially these um, are part of, these are the erosional processes that occur within a channel, a river channel to be specific. The last one, the last erosional processes by concentrated flows are known as springs. So springs are an outlet for groundwater storage before it actually reaches the river. So it occurs when the groundwater or the water table meets Earth's surface. So once the spring flows, it causes a dip in the water table that causes a pressure gradient. So it actually kind of like acts as like a cannon. Okay? It forces the water out of your um, this spring that has formed when the water comes from the water table. So as more groundwater moves underground through the cracks, fissures, and joints, it does more underground subsurface erosion. So all of this groundwater essentially would shoot out of this spring. So the spring could be just on the normal surface and it just causes like a spout to occur. Right, so this is what a spring is, is right? It's essentially bring the water from your underground water table, uh, your groundwater table all the way up to the surface. Right, because of the pressure gradient, okay, it causes the water to kind of like shoot out. So this would be spring. It is another erosion process okay, because it the erosion is done along the way out from the groundwater table as well as underground. And when the water comes out, okay, it will actually cause erosion to occur on the surface as well. So all in all, for this part, your exam requirements, you just need to be able to explain the various erosional processes by water. So the main field would be your splash. Erosion, rain wash, rail wash, as well as any other optional um, erosional processes that we've gone through, like spring. Right, apply these processes to the various landscapes, your cast and aeolian landscapes, or even just your rivers as well, in channel morphology, uh, drainage basin hydrology. Right, you can apply it there as well. Apply it where it's required. And that will be all for this part on your erosion done by water. So that's all I have for this video. If you did learn something and you have enjoyed this video, keep sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It's free. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. And if you have any questions, you can leave me in the comment section below. I will answer them as well. If not, I'll see you guys in the next part on erosion by wind. Bye-bye. <laughs>